in our last session, <laughs> it was very interesting to find out how God will work in us if we're willing to be yielded and to be used, as in that case of standing up in front of all those people and God using me in the prophetic gifting. And God wants to use you. I want to encourage you. He wants to use you. But put your faith into action by doing it, even when it's uncomfortable. The last uh, point that I want to talk about for um, how do we stir it up is that seeds are given, but fruit is grown by fertilizing, by pruning, by watering. You, so you see, we have a seed that's planted within, it, within us. Holy Spirit's got all the gifts in there. That seed is inside of us, but now there has to be something that we do in order to feed it. We must study the word, apply what we've learned, by practicing and activating those gifts that are on the inside of us. And I can tell you that opportunities are always going to be there. Opportunities are always going to come your way. So now it's going to take you stepping out and can I say taking advantage of what God places in front of you. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is exercise and use. Hebrews 5.14 says, But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So here it is by continuous use that believers develop their spiritual senses, their sight, their taste, their smell, their hearing, and their touch. And I've given you a lot of examples about all of this through seeing, feeling, and hearing the voice of God. His voice will become more distinct. It will become so much more clear and that there will be an, in, an increase in the quality and the effectiveness as you exercise and just do it. Remember, it is not you and it's not about you. It's about Jesus and it's about the Holy Spirit working in you and through you. I just want you to think back to some, to some of those experiences when a man or a woman of God spoke a word to you from God. Perhaps you heard from God for yourself. When hearing God's voice, did it not bring you peace, protection? Did it bring provision in your life? Hold on to that word and remind the enemy of what God has said. And, and what I mean by that is some years ago when um, I got cancer, I'd had uh, many words spoken over my life that I had written out. And when I got cancer, I got those words out and I began to go over them because I knew I had, I had not done a lot of what God had spoken into my life. So I got a lot of those words out. And what I did, um, I'm one of these ones that can be very um, passionate and very, out, you know, I, I just got up and that passion within me and I would read those words out loud so the devil would hear, and it wasn't in a quiet little voice. It was, this is what God has said. And I would remind the enemy of what God has spoken in my life. And so therefore, devil, this cancer that you've put on me, it is not going to take me out. It will not take me out. Because at that point in my life, um, there was something that God was calling me into, uh, a, a new level. And, uh, and I knew that... Um, you know, that those words were going to come to fruition. So I stood on that word, believing that cancer would not harm me. And so um, I had to go and have surgery, but God used <laughs> that surgery for his good, can I say? I was able to speak to three backslidden nurses about Jesus Christ. So that was so good. But I ended up um, uh, having to be on my couch for a little bit and I was pressing into the Lord and I heard the devil say to me um, that uh, if I continue on he was gonna um, give me some more to add to that cancer and I thought you liar and I got angry right then and there and I commanded that cancer will never again T touch my body. So I stood on that word of God, all those words that God had spoken over me, they became um, my um, tool that I would use against the enemy. So if you've got words that God has spoken over you, and you've not seen the fruition of that yet, you stand on those words, whether anything comes at you or not, you use that to remind the enemy of what God has said. It becomes a weapon of warfare because God said it. 
So no matter what comes, remember what God has said, and it will override what the enemy uh, is trying to say to you. Don't allow the enemy to rob you or someone else of a blessing, for the life giver has a word of life, not only for you, but for someone that you are bringing that word to. You are who God says you are, and you can do what he says you can do. What would have happened that day had I not shared that word of the Lord for that person who was going to commit suicide? Because you never know whose life can be changed because of one word from the Lord. So um, I'm going to close off with it's important to test that word, whether you're giving it or whether you're receiving it. Does it build up? Does it encourage? Does it agree with scripture? Does it exalt Jesus? It must come to pass. It must lead to God and obedience to him. Does it produce liberty and life? It must be attested, witnessed by the Holy Spirit. This is how you judge whether giving a word or receiving a word for yourself. We have a responsibility with the gifts and what we do with them. We serve others and we are accountable. A person who is teachable will always allow themselves to be accountable and open to correction. I want to encourage you to begin to desire, to hunger, to crave, to hear the voice of God. He speaks differently to every person. We are dependent on him. Jesus himself said that he could do nothing apart from the Father. Let's hear with our spiritual ears. Let's see with our spiritual eyes. He is speaking to each one of you. Now, we have to learn how we hear him. Exercise your senses. Separate your thoughts to have his thoughts and his desires. And clog your minds to have his. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, we have the mind of Christ. We, we mind the things that Christ did. We have the same spirit. Don't expect fireworks and big bangs. It's that still, small voice that we will hear. It's the promptings, the sensings, and what he drops into our spirit. It's a knowing, according to Hebrews 10.34, or it could be just through seeing with your spiritual eyes. But however Holy Spirit speaks, you will have to make the choice to listen and to do. So let's align our spirits with his spirit and be going where he's going and be doing what he's doing and be saying what he's saying. Amen.